You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> The Flight of the Good Ship Clarissa by Ray Bradbury Performed by Otis Jiry The space rocket Clarissa was nine days out from Venus. The members of the crew were also out for nine days. They were hunters, fearless exhibitionists, who bagged game in Venusian jungles. At the start of our story, they are busy bagging their pants, not to forget their eyes. A sort of lull has fallen over the ship. It was during this lull that Anthony Quelch sat sprawled at his typewriter, looking as baggy as a bag of unripe grapefruit. Anthony Quelch, a cosmic glamour boy, with a face like turned linoleum on the third term, busy writing a book, Fascism is communism with a shave, for which he would receive 367 rubles, 10 pazinkas, and incarceration in a cinema showing Gone with the Wind. The boys upstairs were throwing a party in the control room. They had been throwing the same party so long that the party looked like a worn-out first edition of a trapeze artist. There is doubt in our mind as to whether they were trying to break the party up or just do the morning mopping and break the lease simultaneously. Arms, legs, and heads littered the deck. The boys, it seems, threw a party at the drop of a chin, sort of a space cataclysm with rules and little regulation, kind of an atomic convulsion in the front parlor. Neighbors never complained. The neighbors were 150 million miles away, and the boys were tighter than a ketchup bottle at lunchtime. The last time the captain had looked up the hatch and called to his kiddies in a gentle voice, Hell! The kiddies had thrown snowballs at him. The captain had vanished. Clever way they make these space bombs nowadays. A few minutes previous, the boys had been tearing up old amazings and throwing them at one another, but now they contented themselves with tearing up just the editors. Palmer was torn in half, and he sat in a corner arguing with himself about rejecting a story for an hour before someone put him through an orange juice machine, killing him. Orange juice. Sorry. Now? And then they landed on Venus. How in the heck they got back there so quick is a wonder of science, but there they were. Come on, girls, cried Quelch. Put on your shin guards, get out there and dig ditches for the good old WPA and the Rover Boys Academy, Earth Branch 27. Out into the staggering rain they dashed. Five minutes later, they came back in gasping and reeling. They had forgotten their corsets. The Venusians closed in like a million landlords. Charge, men! cried Quelch, running the other way, and then battle. What a fight, folks, cried Clinch. Twenty thousand Earthmen against two Venusians. We're outnumbered, but we'll fight. Bloosh! Correction, ten thousand fighting men. Kabloom! One hundred men from Earth left. Boom! This is the last man speaking, folks. What a fight. I ain't had so much fun since... Help! Someone just clipped my corset wings. Wham! Someone just clipped me. The field was silent. The ship lay gleaming in the pink light of dawn that was just blooming over the mountains like a pale flower. The two Venusians stood whipping over the bodies of the earthlings like onion peelers or two women in a bargain basement. One Venusian looked at the other Venusian and in a high-pitched, hoarse, sad voice said, Hey! 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 This! It shouldn't happen to a dog! Not a dirty little dog! And dawn came peacefully like beer barrels rolling. 